in the bottom left folks in the gold surviving a scare from his from his opponent's teammate there we go he is beyond In the upper right in the red looking for a little bit of a revenge for Gerald for his teammate on Psy Storm, folks. He is the Danish sensation, Max Pax. So a bit of a, I, I, I have not quite determined what I want to call this, despite it being in the meta for quite a while. It's not, it's not a macro max. It's like a pseudo proxy, All right? You build it far enough on the map where I guess technically it is a proxy, but it's still close enough to your base. That's not really one. It doesn't have the downsides nearly as much. So big deal is the fact that Max Max will not scout the fact that yes, there is a uh, barrack somewhere. He's going to know. He just doesn't know how close it is to his base. He's got double gases. Okay, well, uh, I know there's going to be Reapers. I know there's going to be a factory before a command center. I mean, that, that much he can scout. He just doesn't know how close this, uh, the barracks is to his base. But I guess actually on Waterfall. So Waterfall is, is short, is longer actually than, than Moon, than, uh, Moondance. Waterfall is not, the, it's, it's the smallest map, but it's not the, the shortest map. But putting the barracks right here does kind of mean that you can go and get your Reaper across the map rather, rather quickly. That being said, the Reaper runs back home and knocks the probe down, which does mean that the advantages of theoretically having this Reaper be able to hit the other side of the map pretty quickly, uh, they're minimized. But also Beyond knows that Max Pax knows that he has the barracks on the map. And realistically, it's probably not gonna be proxied super far. So the advantage really is enforcing uh, maybe a little bit of a delay, or maybe a little bit of a question mark into Max Pax's end. That's just about it. So beyond this, beyond, uh, did he scout? Yeah, he, uh, no, he did not see the Stargate. So this will be a Stargate opener from Max Pax in this game. Is Beyond going for high ground command center? He just doesn't want Max Pax to pull too many shenanigans, too crazy things, uh, too early, I guess. But this just kind of puts Beyond behind a little bit. Doesn't mean he has to get something done. And the Reaper's going to show up. Says, okay, Stargate play. That's all I wanted to know. I wanted to know what your tech was. And he's going to see that. And Reaper gets out. And it will be straight to Phoenix for Max Max. No, no stop on an Oracle. Maybe if it doesn't get scouted. We see Max Max go Oracle. But as it stands. As the, uh, the Stargate has been scouted out. It's just going to be that solid defensive play. It probably... Well, it's going to be, it looks like it's going to be Phoenix Colossus, actually. So we see the Robo go down. Which is a build that makes a lot of sense on this map. Phoenix Colossus is a style that relies much more on gas than it does minerals. Which means that it is a bit more stable of a two-base style. Now, eventually, you are going to get a third. That's how this works. But you do tend, if you're going Phoenix Colossus, like I think Max Pax is doing, as uh, that probe will go down, certainly delaying third base a little bit. Uh, you do tend to go and you, you stay on two bases a little bit longer. You don't have as many units to keep yourself safe. They just are strong enough to be able to hold a position on two bases. So for now, Max Pax is third base going down right around 415. Uh, it's, it's not a tor not a horrible timing. Maybe just a little slower than uh, a Twilight based opening. The Phoenix scouting around. Beyond actually, so I've made a big point about how Beyond really does not like to go uh, go Vikings. That really is in the mid game. Wait, is he gonna go? Wait a minute, that's the third Viking on the way. We're just on one, one, one. Yeah, okay. Beyond's gonna go for a two base timing. This is cool. So Beyond taking advantage of the fact that this map has some pretty decent chokes, and well, the fact that ooh, Phoenix taking some damage. And the fact that it's so short, so small, he's just, I feel like maybe even he pull, even pull uh, some more SCV spawn, but I mean, seems what he's doing. He's up double the army spell. He's got three Vikings. He's gonna have a lot of high ground vision with these two tanks. And this is not gonna be the easiest position for Max Max to defend. He does not have charge. His Robo Bay is on the way as these Vikings, or excuse me, the, the Phoenix run forward. Viking doing a good job. And we're gonna see the Immortal get targeted down pretty quickly. Uh, Sentry dies as well. And there's a shield battery, sure, but 
part of the point of pulling these SCVs is you repair the tanks. Not a lot of Marines went down. What is it? Only, I mean, three Marines died. And that's, when we're looking at Marine numbers this small, it's not insignificant, but the tanks get themselves sieged up. First bunker is just about done. Phoenix dies. And now Beyond Into the Natural is going to try to force some Zealots off before the fight happens in earnest. That's a dead Zealot. Although, I think it got a couple Marines, so there is that. But the tanks continues to wedge themselves on for The Marine count is the one thing that scares me a little bit. The Marines are what deal with the Immortals. They're what deal with the Zealots. But the Vikings now, they are going to land. That's a big pile of knockdown, depowering the Robo. And oh, big shots there on the Immortal as well. So, Beyond wedging his way into the natural further and forward. Liberator, I, I actually love the Liberator siege up position. It means that Max Pax cannot engage from the right side. It means this is a really a one flank fight coming in from Beyond his Phoenix. Again, they fly in. Again, they continue to fall. The Robo now dead. Beyond continues to wedge his way further and further and further forward. And this may be the go timing. Yeah, it unlocks the left side. Tank's knocking it down. The Widowmine shots, they knock them all down. And now Beyond rotates back, knocks down the all army from the left side. Immortal dead on the right side as well. Yeah, some bio is, is falling but the tanks are all doing damn fine. They're healthy as they can be. And Beyond takes game one. In the bottom left, in the gold up one off a really cool one and a half base push. It's Beyond. His opponents probably not gonna fall victim to that a second time around. It's Max Pax. Game one, we see Max Pax go Phoenix. Plane, it doesn't really work out for him. As again, as, as I said last game, going Phoenix against Beyond is weird, right? Because on the one hand, he loves his tech heavy openings and going phoenix can just kind of insta give that but he also has a bunch of stuff that really phoenix died to so it's not like he's playing i don't know uh, hero marine for example you kind of know what hero marine's gonna do you know he's a system terran it's not like you're playing against uh cure who I have that similar feeling against the the playbook from beyond is, is so wide that i don't know it feels like phoenix play for the most part just doesn't really work out super well and the thing is, that build from Beyond was kind of reactive. Now, he may have had the plan to do that from the start because it's Waterfall, but it's just a 1-1-1. One, 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 right? you, you, have, you have these inflection points where you can say, yeah, I'm just going to uh, keep building units off of one barracks, one factory, one starport. I'm just not going to build the extra two barracks. I'm not going to take my tech in that way once I scout what Max Pax is doing, which is really one of the few times that we can consider a Terran build to be reactive. Normally, the, your, the Terran, more than any other race, is so locked in. Is so locked into the tech path that they want to follow that it's just, you know, something that's really, they, they can't nearly be as reactive as, as other, as a Protoss or a Zerg can. So again, we see Beyond with a two Reaper play into the natural he's gonna go. And we're gonna see, I mean, the Adept is here, so it doesn't really represent a ton of threat. Shield battery in the main base as well as actually the gonna pop out at a rather nice time, but a big deal once again, Beyond says, ah, okay, Stargate play. Let's try this again. I don't think we're gonna see the same level of aggression from Beyond. Although actually, eh. again, it's a barracks factory into command center into starport. So. Beyond will have that quick aggression once again. Now, of course, in this setup, Beyond does have to get some level of damage done because his natural is so late. Okay, what am I on the... Oh, I like this. So the Phoenix is going to look for a lift and what am I on says, nope, bye-bye. I mean, it doesn't die, of course, but that is a lot of damage. And that does mean it will fall victim to a second widow mine, for example. It does mean that uh, Cyclone kills things off easier. Things like that. So for now, 
Rain's getting reactored out. Cyclone on the way. We see a Viking. Uh, second Viking. I feel like Pion's going to go for aggression once again. I, I feel like he's just punishing Max Max once again for having the gall to go for Phoenix play. Okay, there's a tank on the way. I, If we see a third Viking come out of here, it will be. It, that's going to be Artel, I think. Widowmind's second one. The, the, the Widowmind positioning has been fantastic this game. And now we're, well, that's a dead Phoenix. Yeah, no, Bion, I, I think this is going to be his timing. There we go. On to the map. Once again, Cyclone's going to run. We have a couple Widow Mines. The Viking runs across. There's the third. Yeah, Bion's just going all in. Second time in a row. Part of this, of course, probably because it is going to be the GSL on Thursday, and he does have to face Creator. It's not as important as hiding his TBT builds, but, you know, Creator's good. Creator was the finalist of Season 1. He had Top 6 for Season 2. He is back on top so you, you gotta be you, you don't want to give away maps to him not really the cyclone locks on on the healthy phoenix which is honestly well it's just dead okay uh, there's not a lot here that really deals with the second phoenix going down actually i guess technically third one's going to go down that means the vikings are going to land shield battery is is done and it's going to just get targeted down immediately probes are going to get pulled these stalkers folks they're dead 26 army supply to four uh this is just this is even worse for max pex than it was the previous game uh this army trying to chase the stalker down but there's no upgrades to it the thing is this is not an army that beats structures really quickly not until the tank arrives it just kills army rather effectively so third base is going to get slowly shunned down that may be the thing that max Pax is looking for it buys him some time but another probe will go down it's 10 at this point max Pax expanding onto the three o'clock or the yeah the three o'clock position third base now dead Charge, folks, is about 50% complete. So charge will not be the savior of Max Max in this game. No shield battery in the natural, actually. That's a problem. I'm We don't even have the tank stage up. Bjorn says, I don't really care. And yeah, Max Max is dead second time in a row. In the upper left, in the gold, he's up two games to zero off two powerful pushes. He's Bjorn. And in the upper right, in the blue, he's got to find something here, something a little bit different. It's Max Max. Games one and two, Max Max has gone for that Stargate play in games one and two. And Beyond has said, okay, that's fine. You're dead. I'm going to hit you with this timing. And it, 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 these timings that are very hard for Max Pax to follow, or Max Pax to defend. So that is one thing in the corner of, yeah, just don't go Stargate, Max. It didn't work out for you twice in a row. Beyond has been punishing these pretty... If we include the Geralt game, Bion has punished it hard, really, really hard three times in a row. On the flip side, Stargazers is such a good Stargate map with all this dead airspace and this free Terran base that there's not really a good way to defend. It's also a really good blink map. And because, of course, you have vision on the high ground from the Zelnaga, so you don't even need to go Robo, really. You don't even need to go or Oracle in a blink. You don't need to go uh, blink Robo. You can just hold the Zelnaga and you can get aggression into your opponent's base. But for now, it looks like Stargate will not be the play as uh, we're getting we're getting warp gate pretty quickly. So finally, we're seeing something a little bit different. Max Max not quite going and uh, he's, he's not opting into the into the same pain three times in a row. As there we go, Twilight is going to go down, take advantage, of course, of how uh, it actually with blink it almost feels like you can rotate between the the net the pocket natural and the third or the the i guess the pocket natural and the primary natural faster than your opponent can we've seen a lot of cool games like that but for now there's a second hellion on the way so it looks like this may be opting into hellion drops as now the adept's gonna have to back out and man, Bion has, if this is Hellion Drops, Bion has just won the mind game so hard. Because the Hellion Drops are bad against the Phoenix opener. And there we go, third Hellion on the way. Yeah, Bion has won this mind game so incredibly hard. He had two builds that punished Stargate 
in the extreme and oh actually this is so smart here so this the single highlight on the map is actually going to tell B, uh max packs that beyond's going for widow mine drops because the single hellion into widow mines is that well uh actually wait um it's just gonna be a dead adept okay the hellion is well maybe yep it, oh no no oh this is a big scout for max this is yeah okay the adept will die but this is actually really really well yeah this is this is really big so the what i was talking about i was saying that the the putting the hellion on the other side of the map does tell max packs that this is going to be a widow mine drop because there, there are a lot of builds where you go and you say yep i'm gonna get a hellion because i don't really have a lot to do with the factory before i have the gas for the widow mine so i'm building that hellion it's gonna give me map control scouting and then i'm gonna go into widow mine play that single one visible on the map is very much a tell of widow mine drops but because yeah, max pack saw the extra hellion is now going to be well prepared for this one dropping into the main or excuse me into the natural line them up here that's actually a fairly decent lineup we still got to be very careful but beyond he's so he's searching for more he knows that he's two games up he can look for the big shot he's not going to find it only two workers fall excellently handled there by max packs so now with blink about 10 seconds out warp prism already on the map there is now a world where beyond can uh, get punished really hard he can get punished extremely extremely hard as by the way not only is this a blink opener this is four gate blink so max packs you can have a lot of stalkers and beyond is still committing to things that are aggressive he has one banshee out second one on the way bl uh, excuse not blink uh cloak halfway done three quarters of the way done so this does mean that beyond is going to have oodles and oodles of damage into his opponent's main base but he also he's gonna have to be very worried about these stalkers stalker <laughs> one stalker blanks to the high ground says hi i'm gonna take some shots and running away beyond loses a supply depot but that really is the the, the extent of his troubles for right now is banshee into the high ground now the banshee can I, I yeah so the banshee should be able to kill these probes in the gas well actually technically the banshee can kill it takes five shots but he can kill any probe but in the natural is gonna where it's gonna look we have an observer popping out just in time beyond not getting the damage here either again getting a little bit aggressive a little bit too greedy now that's the second banshee uh, max packs okay he blinks a little bit too late that max packs could have killed that but he didn't quite have his uh all his blinks in a row Now the high ground observer does fall we only have one observer on the map right now but again the banshees they're both dead right beyond got just about negative value from that one so stock is now trying to find the way a little bit forward but it's this tank on the high ground the bunkers as well i mean stalkers cannot really find an entrance but max Pax does have his third base mining fully he's on 59 workers with the 51 of beyond beyond there's no third base here he's adding two additional barracks he's going all in he does not want this he wants to get back to gsl prep he does not want this to go too late so he's going up to five racks he's gonna flood across the map with tons of stuff and this is a build that here max Pax is very happy about because you get a lot of charge lots that is designed the the eight gate charge lot really minimal gas three gas build although i guess we are adding a fourth so not quite as minimal gas it does mean that there will be a tech transition as there we go temple archives on the way for storm uh that build is designed to kill this to, to kill this build that beyond has question though is whether beyond is going to get add-ons okay so he's, he will get tech labs he will get uh reactors on the fourth and fifth barracks there is definitely as good scan there from beyond uh there there is a build that looks to hit even a little faster that effect that just minimizes oh i'm sorry caster's blind i i thought there was no third base but third base is now down stock is actually taking a really good fight against a small amount of this bio as the rest of the bio tries to find its way onto the low ground and you know beyond he's gonna tag some of these uh stalkers but marauders do not have concussive so it's just really a fight that max packs wins meanwhile random zealot on the backside. not really sure what that's doing there and it will die Was the what, what I, oh, okay that was a warp prism a couple zealots on a warp and that didn't get much combat shields done in 10 seconds and this is where the army of beyond really hits its first spike with stim with plus one with combat shields because i mean that is combat shields is like 20 percent more each more health into this army but beyond 
now. Oh, he's going to see that there's a recall, so he's going to be able to kill one. Uh, he's going to kill one Stalker now with Concussive Shells. Not, well, it's actually a little bit far away. A couple more Stalkers on the map. So Beyond Sensing Opportunity here a little bit, getting maybe removing four more army supply from Max Packs. But it's still only three tanks, and it's still not a ton of Widow Mines. And Storm, though, it, it's done in about 15 seconds. So that's going to be a problem. It's not ready just yet. And Bion's going to try to take the fight before that happens. Uh, oh, the Zealots on hold come in. Uh, that is a bit of a problem. Zealots on the other side trying to find something. Bion lifts this third base. Says, I don't really want to take this fight. But now we got to pay attention to storms in the War Prison. Bion kiting backwards, kiting backwards, kiting backwards. Big storms on the backside. But still the tanks find value. They're still doing a good job here on the bio. Bion is just so damn powerful. All of the storms do not find the value that they're looking for. The Archons are dead. War Prism is dead. Yes, more Warpins from... Max Packs will be able to force Beyond back. Your stock is being blink forward. The heavy medevac, the full medevac does fall. But still, that was... It, that could have been so much worse for Beyond. He still keeps things alive. He still trades roughly efficiently. And now as Max Pax runs forward with a bunch of charge lots, blink stalkers, there's enough at home that Beyond should be able to defend this. He loses a couple SCVs. Fine. He's still above 60. He still has three bases, and really, when we look at this, he's mining efficiently. He doesn't necessarily need to go to five and six gas just yet. Yes, more so in TVP than he would have to in uh, in other matchups. But even still, Terrans tend to run at a they, they tend to about run a bit hot on the gas. They tend to run a little bit gas rich. As uh, zealots are going to get found out here, and they're dead. The rest of the army will arrive. Stalkers blink forward. And, well, that just means these stalkers, they're going to go down. There are still three storms, I think, in the warp prison. Maybe a couple more if the High Templar had been in the warp prison long enough. But beyond. Solidly on three bases now, as there are, in fact, two observers. A little bit of a misrally there for Max Pax. But Max Pax, he's going to see that beyond is being, is really trying to dominate the north side of the map. So. He does have this base on the bottom right. It's really the only spot he can expand to. But he's trying to go up to five bases. And Bion is stuck on three. So Max Pax doing a great job. If he's going to, if he gets away with it, he's going to be doing, he's doing a great job with the green. The zealots, they run into a bunch of wood mines. It's, yeah, the, the one zealot remains. is going to try to clean all this up. But the rally of Bion is, is pretty nice. Scan goes off the middle of the map. Bion knows exactly where Max Pax is. But the thing we, the thing we're looking for if we're a Bion fan, the thing we're not looking for if we're a Max Pax fan is, how long until Bion realizes that that bottom right base has been taken? How long until he realizes that he is two bases behind his opponent? I guess one base behind his opponent now. But look at this. Bion getting... It's, it's funny. Bion doesn't get Vikings against Colossus. But he does get Vikings as... Oh, okay. Scans. Is the army's not there. Oh, that's a fairly missed scan. But Bion now rotating the bottom side. He... he at the very least, he had this sense that this base was set up. I mean, you do know that uh, the style that Max Pax is playing, he doesn't want to stay up about one base on his opponent. So these elves are going to get shredded, but from the north side, that's where the fight is going to kick off in earnest. Storms there going to actually get really nice on the backside. EMPs do not land. Beyond's got to run. He's got to hive. He's maybe going to target the base down. No, he's not. And that means this army is pretty much just dead and gone. Great fight there from Max Pax. And Beyond doesn't even... I feel like in situations like that, you just kind of kill the base because... Well, you're going to lose a lot anyway. Just snap the base down and then pick up and run away. But that does, I guess, you, well, you got to minimize the army so the counterattack's not going to be quite as significant. But beyond. Dropping with the, the, the last dregs of this army. He's going to have to run away a little bit before. Stark's going forward, and that's going to be a full medevac. Of, I think four ghosts in that medevac. Or at least uh, some combination of ghosts and marauders. But the rest of the medevacs, at the very least, they will be able to run away. And this army doesn't have a lot of anti-air to it. But beyond it, he finds himself down an upgrade. All right, it's 2-1 versus 1-1. One, one. His 2-2 two, two only just barely started. And, okay, actually, big scout there from beyond. He's going to see that the army's running across. So when am I in, it burrows up. It's going to get, okay, good split there from Max Pax. I'm say maybe a couple of these wounded zealots. But Max Pax, he's just setting up, or beyond is just setting up a minefield. He says, I... I I don't know that I can take this fight, so I need you to... I need you to eat a couple Widowmine shots, please and thank you. I need you to have... Uh, for it to be a little bit more complicated. As the Vikings on the high ground, they're slowly wearing away. This is actually not a lot of anti-air, at least not a lot of anti-air that can get on top of the Vikings. And big EMPs, big Widowmine shots do mean the Max Packs 
does feel forced back a little bit and we look at the supply and we say wow max pack is up almost a quarter he's all about 50 supply but 23 of that is in workers which is significant but beyond is on four bases he's, he's fully saturated so it's really not that big of a deal the zealous now they run forward stalkers going forward as well widow mines they're not going to get their, their shots they're looking for the vikings trying to get on top of things now from the dead airspace in the high ground but guardian shield keeping these colossus alive so so well beyond micring backwards knocking down all the zealous the archons their paper as well one colossus does not even go down though beyond can he stem forward here can he take the fight he's looking for one colossus getting low but not low enough in the rally of beyond needs time Max Max, fantastic fight. It opens up the gold. It opens up the rally. And folks, it looks like we're going to have a game four here. Max Pax, he's on four Colossus now because he knows the... Well, he, he knows the Viking count of Beyond is not all that significant as Widowmine. Doesn't really even get the shot off. Still, it runs for stocks going forward as well. Looking for that Ghost DMP is off before it goes down. And Disruptor shots... Uh, Disruptor's joined the fray as well. Now, finally... It looks like... No, the Vikings don't even get the Colossus. There are four stupid low Colossus and one will fight. No, it's not even going to go down. Bjorn does not get the fight he's looking for. I'm so used to him taking those fights anyways, but he doesn't get what he needs. And Max Pax claws his way back. One, two. On the bottom left side of the map, folks, in the blue. He's down one, but showing some resilience. Let's see if he's got a little bit more in the tank. Precise Storm is Max Pax. His opponent up two to one. Losing the macro game though, he is Bjorn. I don't think we're going to see Stargate again. I, yes, Stargate might be good on this map. I, well, actually, you know what? I don't think the previous Stargate stories, one way or the other, are going to be all that relevant because Data Sea is big. And it doesn't have quite as nice of a pushing position outside of the natural like Beyond was able to take advantage of. I mean, there's no kind of high ground, low ground, high ground situation that he can wedge himself into, which would mean he would be really pushing. Yeah, I don't think, we're, I don't think we see the 1-1-1 one, one, one all in from Beyond. And certainly not because we see the the the, the command center before the, the the factory. Okay, there we go. It will be Twilight after all in Bion? Huh. So that last game, he had a really cool mind game with the Hellions, and then it didn't end up working out. It's going to be first Hellion on the way. Still, it runs forward. How many Hellions does Bion get? I think... Oh, actually, with the Adept here as well, that's a bit of a complicated fight. We will see the Hellion, uh, or excuse me, the Adept does fall. Hellion getting rather low, but with the Hellion and the Marines, and actually the repair there, good target fire from Max Pax to shut it down before it gets too bad but he handles this very well so at the end of the day he lost marine an scv or and a hellion okay <laughs> there's another adept out of the map it got the hellion uh for uh, an adept in the zealot which is again pretty nice trade there for yun but we're gonna see a marine drop so we saw him we saw him do this against Geralt. i mean you get, you get seven marines you drop on the third base and it's like okay well if this is target opener you're kind of screwed but this is not a stargate opener this is a gateway opener in fact uh or there's a blink opener excuse me as we see the robo on the way this is the three gate blink coming in from max Pex. i don't think that's a surprise anyone that's kind of like your standard middle of the road setup but eight marines in a medevac are going to try to do something about that one a couple more stalkers warp in but blink only about halfway done so it's not really like blink is going to make a difference here you put yourself behind the mineral line the stalkers just kind of have to take the fight 
And with there being no shield battery at the natural, Bion will be able to target some things down. How much of it remains to be seen? Is now War Prism again? Actually, you know, Max Pack's adding a fourth gate. One, two. Yeah, Max Pax is going four gate blink once again. Interesting. I mean, we. So with the Chrono on the, the War Prism as well, Max Pax must have put a lot of pressure on. And with this Raven opener from Bion, first tank only just now on the way. Max Pax, it feels like he's got a, the, a pretty positive build order over Bion in this setup. When your opponent goes for Raven, and Raven after a really quick medevac for a drop, that is a pretty delayed stim. That is a pretty delayed, that is pretty delayed tank production. So Max Pax will be able to get active on the map. Pretty much showing up in Bion's base right when the tank is, uh, the first tank is done. By the way, this Cyclone, another useful defensive tool. You can lock on to Warp Prism, maybe you can kill off Stalkers here or there. It's also on the map, scouting out for some sort of Oracle or something. This is a great setup for Max Pax to try to, well, take us to game number five. Stalkers playing on the high ground right now. This just can be a dead supply depot. Tank's going to rally over eventually. And yeah, supply depot just doesn't even, I was going to say it was going to burn down, but Max Pax ensures that it does not. Raven's looking for a little bit of value. And now more stalkers warp in. Only three of them, though. It, it's interesting. Despite Max Pax, I think having a pretty good build order advantage here. And going for four gate like this, he's not really committing to it. In fact, his third base already on the way. So three probes have died. It's, it feels like this happens so often where players, they have a good pull. They're like, yeah, we're, we're good. We're fine. And then they pull the, the probes back a little bit too early. And that's when they lose their workers. It's like, maybe shift click a little further away. But yeah, no target fire on the probes in the main base. So only three workers, the totality of the harassment from the first round of this Raven. is It's kind of funny looking at this position. Technically, Cyclone just runs in natural, gets three more probes. Okay, uh, that was unexpected. This this Raven positioning because of all the, the structures here. The Raven, was, the Raven was safe, but now it moves a little bit further out. That's now immediately charges on the way. A couple more gateways going up to seven. But again, I'm, I'm so surprised to see Max Pax not lean into this four gate. If you get that fourth gateway, a Chrono out of Warp Prism, you may expect to see at least some level of aggression. Otherwise, it just feels like you kind of get a little bit too far behind. This Beyond. What's he at? Yeah, 311 right now, adding in the two additional barracks and that third base. But his army supply is just continuing to grow and grow and grow. His uh, plus one just about done. Stim as well. Moves out of the map a little bit. And the stalkers, they, I mean, I don't like this move out now. There's just too many Marines are dying. But once you bring the tanks a little bit further forward, I guess I, I, I guess it's going to be okay. And this, oh, this, this rally though. Beyond's got a bit of a surround going up, but it may not be set up properly. Stalkers, uh, well, okay. Yeah, they're going to get the, well, actually, they're just not. The medevac will eventually go down, but not before three or four Stalkers fall. That was... That felt like something that Max Pax could have punished really easily. And instead, it's a situation where Max Pax lost more stalkers than he should have and did not get nearly as much. So four tanks now going to siege up out of range of where they want to be. And well, beyond saying, I'm, I'm not even going to leapfrog this. I don't think I have to. Tanks on the right side on this position. That is so hard to fight into without charge. Luckily, charge is done. A storm only halfway done. And more importantly, no high Templar. Uh, Max Pax under such significant threat that he felt that he had to go and morph them into Archons immediately, just to keep himself alive, which I think he did. But even still, look at this uh, Zealot flank getting set up here by Max Pax. He can be fighting the five tanks, though. The, the, the flank has to be perfect. So now we're going to see the army move in. Uh, first terror, first casualty, first target is going to be that shield battery. The Zealot flank going to come in, but already here, the Zealots, they're just dead tanks. Now they can target on the left side with, of course, the, the anti-armor missile. So the Zealots, they're paper. The, they're, they're tankiness. The, th the reason you have them, there's no reason to have that anymore. Another tank does fall, but there are three still here. Archon's getting very, very, very low, but they will. the last one will stay alive. And more High Templar warp in, more, oh, more Archons, but the Zealots, they continue to rally forward. Again, the Archons die. And it looks like actually these were warped in for storms. Can Max Pax survive for 25 seconds? I, I remain unconvinced. Beyond stims in. That, that base is so very low. Beyond puts himself in a corner. And we just need the next round of his reinforcements. And they should be arriving right now. The Marauder stims forward. Still not targeting the base down. <laughs> kind of. I, I, I keep expecting the base to get targeted. Just, uh, there we go. Feedback on the Raven. But still, two storms will be available. Now the base is dead. Okay. That's what we're looking for. It's now a... 
Three base Terran versus a two and a half base Protoss. Third base on the way for Max Pax once again. And now it's a little bit harder to move forward. We see the Archons get, or an Un Archon get morphed in. Storm drops and doesn't really get all that much. One Storm remains. Yeah, now heading his Ghost Academy. So at least from that perspective, at least from that, Max Pax is a bit of a window where his Storms are not, or his, his Light Temple are not really going to be contested super hard. I'm not sure it really matters. One thing I do want to point out, though, is it seems like Beyond, he's just going to go straight into plus two attack. He's only on, no, he's on double eBay, but he just didn't get armor. Okay. He just doesn't realize he, he forgot armor, but now Zealous run forward. The tanks are, they're just getting buffered. The, the Marauders sit in front of the tanks, the bio as well. And, and Max Pack says, G to GG. Beyond takes the series three to one. And he is your champion here of EPT 141 North America.